In this video, we will cover the fact that future predictions are very likely to be can't tell answers. The logic of this is straightforward. It is unlikely that a text will give you enough grounds for safely predicting the future, for the simple reason that the future can rarely be predicted safely. Hence, as a rule of thumb, you should be strongly biased towards can't tell as being the correct answer choice with these types of questions. Our objectives of the next five minutes or so are to define future predictions, giving examples, and demonstrate how future predictions almost always lead to can't tell. Future predictions can sound quite abstract, so to help explain, let me give you an example. A future prediction is a statement that depends on events occurring in the future. That may sound obvious, but many students pick incorrect answers simply because they do not realize they are picking future predictions. Words to look out for are will, and to a lesser extent, would. Without getting into a discussion about tenses and conditional statements, those are, broadly speaking, the two words that the UCAT will try to use to sneak a future prediction past you. The correct answer for questions that use future predictions is the vast majority of the time can't tell. We can't tell the future, and an article is highly unlikely to claim that we can. With this in mind, let's get to the answers of those questions. Question 1. The number of people pledging to donate 10% of their income will grow over the incoming years. True, false, or can't tell? For question 1, the answer is can't tell. Did you spot the word will that appeared as part of the question? The UK cat likes to attach mundane or obvious predictions to the word will, hoping that will lead you into a false sense of security. Even though it seems very likely that the number of people giving the pledge will grow, we cannot say this for sure. Question 2. Effective altruism is a phrase meaning much the same as charity. True, false, or can't tell? For question 2, the answer is false. We can deduce this from the phrase at the end of the first paragraph that distinguishes effective altruism from traditional altruism or charity. Always be alert when you see slightly more advanced vocabulary, such as distinguishes, as the UK cat knows many students glaze over at that point. Here, the text is saying that effective altruism is not just the same thing as charity. Question 3. There are people who believe that they have an obligation to live modestly. True, false, or can't tell? For question 3, the answer is true. Again, the giveaway was the more unusual vocabulary. In the middle of the third paragraph is this sentence. Some believe it is a moral duty to alleviate suffering through donations, if the purchases that one forgoes to donate do not cause comparable suffering to oneself, leading some of them to lead a frugal lifestyle. Notice the three harder and more unusual choice of words, alleviate, foregoes, and frugal. This part of the passage is picked to cause some students to skip ahead, to avoid working to grasp the meaning of the sentence. That doesn't mean understanding every word, it means understanding the general meaning of the sentence. Here, the text is saying that yes, some people do feel they have an obligation or duty to live modestly and to not overspend. Question 4. If the movement gains more media attention, thousands more individuals would take the pledge to donate 10% of their income. True, false, or can't tell? For question 4, the answer is can't tell. Did you notice the word would? This is a future prediction, and though very likely to be true, it cannot be guaranteed. It is possible that if more media attention is given to the movement, then everyone watching or listening may also decide to pledge. However, in the future, anything is possible. It's unlikely, but maybe more media coverage will result in no additional people wanting to pledge. The point is that we cannot tell from the text we are provided with, thus proving again that future predictions lend themselves the can't tell option. We hope you now feel more confident in answering questions involving future predictions. They are tough to spot sometimes, but now that you are prepared, you should welcome seeing them. Of course, nothing can beat practice and repetition. So don't forget to regularly test your abilities. Good luck. That concludes another UCAT lesson. If you like the strategies and content we're developing and want to see more free content, please leave us a like and don't forget to subscribe.
If you have any UCAT questions, leave us a comment below and we'll help you sort it out and get your preparation up to speed.